I'm John, register 32. Hi, Eugene, e. register number 17. Hi, my name is Nyodi and I'm registered number 22. And we are from oh, Wadi! The reason why we are recording this video is because we want to shed light on what happened to Singapore before 1819. This is part of our HI group project by Nancha High School and probably the rest of Singapore as well. So, thank you for tuning in and enjoy! Uh, welcome back kids. Today I'm going to talk about our first inference. Okay, we inferred that Singapore was a poor country as in Wang Da Ren Tao Yi Zhu Lian. It states that the market was split into two settlements, Banzu and Long Yaman. The people in Banzu traded poor goods, poor goods like uh, red gold, blue satin, cotton print and aromatic wood. It was a peaceful trading port city under the rule of a local chief. However, the people of Long Yaman relied on pirates. <laughs> <laughs> Our next inference that is that Singapore traded the Javanese. This is because Javanese style jewelry was, was found in SG. Oh, do let's sneak over trying to win. Oh my god, oh my god! Oh, 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 oh let me see! Oh. It's a treasure! <laughs> This shows that Singapore had traded with Java. One of the examples of the jewelry found is an armlet. Yes, we oh, found treasure. It's an armlet. After so long. Let me try and wear it. It's so cool. <laughs> It can be seen that the rulers are rich from the color head was made out of gold. This shows that the rulers of Singapore have enough money to either trade or buy the gold jewelry which has a lot of value because the rulers were rich. It also can be seen that they live at Fort Canning Hill from an artist impression of Fort Canning uh, and there is a palace on top of it. Which we can infer that different types of currency were used in Singapore. This can be seen from the website called MAS, Monetary Authority of Singapore, where they showed many pictures of coins and currency found in ancient Singapore. Oh, look what I have! I have a lollipop, a one dollar coin, one ringgit, and Mr. Bush. <laughs> well, thank you, Yishin. From the pictures of the different types of currency, we can infer that Singapore used different types of currency. Not that currency, of course. Thus, we can infer that Singapore traded with many other countries because uh, in order to obtain these currencies, uh, the people in Singapore must have obtained the coins from trading with traders from other countries. Sawadita! Let me trade this $1 for your $2. Thank you so much. It was a fair transition. <laughs> Since the variety of currencies had a direct link with the numbers of countries Singapore had traded with, we can infer that Singapore traded with other countries. We can also infer that most of the trading is found at the mouth of the Singapore River. This can be seen at the mouth of the Singapore River, where many ornaments made of gold have been found. Oh, I found this at the mouth of the, of the Singapore River. Oh, wow, so cool. Oh, it's so oh, cool. Look. Oh, look. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Since there was no gold produced in Singapore, trade must have happened in order for the gold to get there. Due to the large amount of gold 
ornaments found there, we can infer that most of the trading activity took place at the mouth of the Singapore River. In conclusion, our group feels that Singapore was not a sleepy fishing village before 1819, because Singapore traded with many countries and had a palace on top of Port Cannon Hill. In the 14th century, Singapore, which was known as domestic at the time, was a sizable port city with a population of around 10,000 people. The people of domestic witnessed much more than fishing activity, as many countries from Southeast Asia throughout and throughout the world traded there. The establishment of trading point Tamase by the Sea Jumaya Empire was a convenient was convenient as traders from all around the world could meet up there. While trading their goods, they can stock up all on their supplies like food and water. This soon made Tamase a popular, popular destination for traders. Tamase was bustling with people landing on the port and selling several goods. This further proven by what archaeological finds that archaeologists have found dating back to the 14th century. These objects include Chinese porcelain and a gold armlet. From all the evidence listed above, we can conclude that Singapore was definitely not a sleeping fishing village before 1819. We hope you enjoyed this video and we hope you learn more about Singapore before 1819. Thank you and goodbye! goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Oh! <laughs>